Good morning. I'm Pastor Deb Stein. Welcome to online worship on behalf of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool and St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse. I pray that we all receive comfort in worship today so that we might be a comfort to others in the days to come. Pentecost derives its name from the Jewish festival celebrating the harvest and the giving of the law on Mount Sinai 50 days after Passover. 50 days after Easter, we celebrate the Holy Spirit as God's presence within and among us. In Acts, the Spirit arrives in rushing wind and flame, bringing God's presence to all people. Paul reminds us that though we each have different capacities, we are unified in the Spirit that equips us with these gifts. Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on his disciples, empowering them to forgive sin. We celebrate that we too are given the breath of the Holy Spirit and sent out to proclaim redeeming love to all the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people, sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. A reading from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parathens, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jewish born and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You Judeans and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your youth shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. This is the gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is Pentecost Sunday, a day we've been building towards since Easter. Yet this Pentecost is like none other any of us have experienced before. We often attend worship wearing red to show our church spirit in support of this holiday. We generally think of this day as a birthday for the church. Yet it is truly so much more. John's Gospel takes us back to the evening of Easter, to that upper room where the doors are locked and the disciples are hiding in fear. Seemingly out of nowhere, Jesus enters through those locked doors, greeting them with the words, Peace be with you. After showing them that it was truly him raised from the dead, he breathes new life into each of them. The power of his own breath becomes the Holy Spirit for them all. In Acts, the author of Luke brings us back to that upper room after Jesus' ascension. The Holy Spirit enters through the locked doors, but far from peaceful, the Spirit comes in a violent wind with flames that pause to rest on each disciple. It seems like these two Gospels show us that the Holy Spirit comes to each of us in many different and unexpected ways. For some, it comes in a quiet whisper. For others, in a loud shout or maybe a kick in the pants to get us going in the right direction. Sometimes it comes in the wisdom of a mentor and other times perhaps in a tiny lost kitten looking for love. The Holy Spirit comes when we least expect it, but always when we need it most. This is a holiday like no other. The people are celebrating the festival of weeks, seven weeks since Passover. They've come from all around, speaking many different languages with different customs and varied experiences and expectations. Yet, whether they realize it or not, they've been gathered together by the Holy Spirit this morning, the one whom the crucified Messiah promised. The pa Deborah Mumford wrote in her commentary on Acts, the promise of the Holy Spirit compelled 120 people to gather in anticipation. They rearranged their schedules and synchronized their calendars to make themselves available. The power of the Holy Spirit enabled each person in that room 
to speak a different language other than their own. And it got the attention of the crowd, perhaps because of the rushing wind or the sheer chaos of all these people speaking together at the same time. The power of the Spirit emboldened Peter to speak to the masses and caused the crowds to not only hear Peter's message, but also to receive it to such an extent that 3,000 people decided to follow Jesus that day. Sadly, the doors to our buildings must remain closed and locked. Yet, as much as we love them, our buildings are not the church. We, all of us gathered around our computer screens, tablets, iPads, and smartphones, we are the church. And the doors to our faith are not closed, nor is our willingness to follow Jesus. That's why we're here, after all. We're gathered together online this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit, who transcends locked doors, closed minds, and even the internet. We are a people created, baptized, and called by God's own Spirit so that we can be a witness to others who will come to know God in Jesus through our words and actions. Following Jesus' example, the Spirit guides us to welcome all people, not just those who look or speak as we do. The Spirit guides us to live in ways that reveal God's love and peace through our words and all the things we do, pointing not to ourselves, but to Jesus, God enfleshed. The Spirit reminds us of Jesus' teaching and examples, serving the poor, the outcast, the victim, the hungry, the imprisoned, the homeless, and the vulnerable, which today includes those who are at particular risk for getting and perhaps even dying from the COVID-19 virus. Today, the Holy Spirit calls us to make personal and communal choices that err on the side of loving our neighbor, acting with patience, grace, and the flexibility necessary to consider the steps we must take for the people of God who will one day worship in our buildings once again. This could mean keeping the doors closed a little while longer. It could mean wearing a mask and staying at least six feet apart. It could also mean taking our time to ensure that we understand all of the repercussions of our decisions and who will be most impacted by them. This is not an easy time for any of us. Yet even though we're all impacted by this pandemic, we still have differences. Some have serious health concerns, while others may be afraid to go outside because their young people could be shot and killed just for having darker skin. Some may have a family member who works on the front lines in a hospital or the grocery store, while others may have had the virus themselves, and far too many have lost someone close to them. Even as a community who gather in Christ, we don't all face the same challenges or have the same resources. Any of these things can lead us as individuals and a church to different thoughts and opinions on what to do next. Some of us feel like we're gathered in that upper room, fearful of going out at all while others are chomping at the bit to get out into the sunshine with or without a mask. Some may be pushing for the church to open its doors while others are just fine with the way things are for now. To be honest, it's not all at all easy 
to make choices that God would have us make. After all, it wasn't even easy for Jesus. As the Reverend Dr. David Lowe put it, Jesus was criticized for including everyone, ridiculed because he took sides with the vulnerable rather than the powerful, rejected for not being what people were expecting in a Messiah, and crucified in weakness and shame. And yet, he is the one through whom God saved the world by communicating the life-giving news that God's love is large enough to include everyone and powerful enough to defeat even death. It is a different Pentecost than we've ever experienced before. With the pandemic keeping us from gathering in person, from sharing a smile or a hug, a cup of coffee and a pastry, yet even as we mourn the loss of this freedom in worship, in person, let us not forget the pain of injustice that far too many of our neighbors face each day, made even worse by this pandemic. On that first Pentecost, God empowered the church to continue Jesus' ministry, to share the good news so that others could come to know and experience God as we do. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, let us not be afraid to reach out to others, to stand up for justice, to console those who mourn, and to comfort the sick in whatever way we are able. God's Spirit has always been with us from the very beginning and always will be comforting, guiding, and showing us the way. The Holy Spirit reminds us that we're not just an Easter people, we're a Pentecost people, gathered by the Holy Spirit, equipped, sanctified, and sent to bear witness to God's love and peace for the whole world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. At the words, Lord, in your mercy, you may respond, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on the spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless all who work on the front lines of this pandemic to bring us healing, comfort, and care, as well as those who work to ensure that we have things that we need to live. We especially pray for those on our prayer list and those we offer now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit to welcome the, those we meet, wherever we are. Keep us mindful for, uh, for the safety of others as we wash our hands and wear masks in public places. Encourage us to rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As, we've, as you've led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow your example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In this point in the service, we would normally share a meal of Holy Communion, a meal of Christ's victory over death, a meal that brings to us the forgiveness of sin, new life and salvation through the presence of Jesus. But of course, these things come to us in many ways, not just through the meal of communion, which right now we're unable to share. Therefore, I invite you to join me in a prayer of spiritual communion, the gifts of God. Let us pray. Jesus, I want to receive you in whatever way I am able. I pray that you would come to me, fill me with your presence, fill me with your peace, fill me with your love. Grant me, Lord, your grace and your forgiveness for those things that I have done and the things that I have left undone. With this prayer, make me one with all your faithful people of all times and places. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And the only victories we can claim are those which he has won. Oh, loving God, we see you in the eyes of those around. But for now, Lord, we are pleading that your spirit will come down. And may the spirit of the Pentecost be born in us today. May the fire and the water given then live in our hearts to stay. And may we hear the word, and may our lives be turned back to your way. May we come to call you Lord, just as they did today. When the loving face of Jesus seems but a faded view, fill our hearts, Lord, with your presence. 
send the counselor there too. Oh, the trials that we face each day to faith and hope and love are too much for us to bear alone. Holy Ghost, come from above and may the spirit of the Pentecost be born in us today. And may the fire and the water given then live in our hearts be pray. And may we hear the word and may our lives be changed back to your way. And may we come to call you Lord just as they did today. Come quickly then, we need you now. The time is running down. Come to save us and to hear us and to help us wear your crown. When we know the truth, we are set free to speak to those in need of your loving Holy Spirit who for us will intercede. And may the spirit of the Pentecost be born in us today. May the fire and the water given then be in our hearts we pray. And may we hear the word and may our lives be changed back to your way. May we come to call you Lord just as they did that day. Just as they did. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Generosity is a sign of faith in God who provides abundantly for us and through us for others. Even though our doors are closed at this time and we can't meet in person, our ministry does continue. If you're having financial troubles during this difficult time, we appreciate your prayers, and you will remain in ours. If you have a stable income and can give a little extra, we will appreciate your thoughtfulness, and you will remain in our prayers as well. Let us be a blessing for each other in whatever ways we can. Thank you. I have some announcements to share with you. One in particular is a very personal one. I am very proud and happy to say that the congregation of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool has called me to be their part-time pastor. And so now I serve both St. Paul's in Liverpool and St. Stephen in Syracuse equally. 
Please keep us all in your prayers as we go forth in this new partnership in ministry together. If you must enter either St. Stephen or St. Paul's for any reason, please remember to wear a mask and be sure to clean and sanitize the areas that you've touched. At St. Paul's, we ask that you sign in and sign out on the sheet at the entrances. Currently, churches are listed in phase one of the governor's reopening plan, but because we tend to be an intimate group and often have large gatherings, both churches are working on their own phase reopening plan for when the time is appropriate. In all things, we keep our worshipers' health and safety in mind. If you have any pastoral needs, please, please feel free to contact Pastor Deb, or you can reach out to either St. Stephen or St. Paul's church offices. If you or someone else needs to be placed on the prayer list, please send a message to either of the offices. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Alleluia.